Pierre of Ohio, wearing his beautiful chapeau but who's this Caballero? The Emperor of the Far West, when he began his revolver, he can shoot a fly d'un seul geste. In the desert, there is person, never a good telephone, he's a cowboy, poor and lonesome. Il a pas peur de personne. Pas surtout des Dalton. Il a pas peur de personne. Cowboy, are you lucky, Luke? Because I hear this ruthless criminal is a friend of yours. Yeah, she's my friend, but she ain't no criminal. Oh, really? Well, I know otherwise. She committed bank robbery, then she assaulted a lawman, namely me, Sheriff Scarecrow. I'll admit, Calamity Jane is, well, colorful, but she has a good heart. I had a good head till she belted me. Now she's wanted, dead or alive, and I aim to catch her. I have a feeling she's gonna try to get in touch with you, Lucky Luke. But I warn you, if you help a criminal, that makes you a criminal too. Well, looks like Calamity Jane's in trouble again. Better find Calamity Jane. She needs help. I knew I could count on you, Luke, old buddy. I do not like people spitting in my water. I didn't rob no bank, Luke. The real robber was Phil Fastfinger, a former partner of mine. work together taking money from rich fools who like poker. stand for no flim flamming. It ain't right. To get his revenge, he stole my buckskin jacket, put on a wig, and robbed the Trap City Bank, where I keep my money and all the tellers know me. So Phil Fastfinger robbed the bank. Did he also assault Sheriff Scarecrow? Uh, no, that was me. But it was self-defense. He stuck a six-shooter in my ribs. Chewing tobacco? Bill will head for the Mexican border. But first, he'll stop off in Muskrat Junction, where he's stashed all of his loot. You know how to get there? I sure do. Think we can make the trip without running into Sheriff Scarecrow? I believe we can, yep. Attaboy, Luke! That's what I wanted to hear! Hey. I got my eye on you, Duke. Sheriff, catch Jane and get the reward. I'm so smart, it's scary. Yo! Say, 
here looking glum, Luke. What's wrong? Well, normally I track outlaws. Feels kind of strange to have a sheriff tracking me. Ah, quit being such a scaredy cat. I could really go for some grub. Ah, uh, no gunshots. Don't worry, I've got a better way to hunt. I sing him into submission. You sing? Oh, my darling! Oh, my darling! Oh, my darling! Clementine! I'd rather face a herd of horse-eating hyenas than listen to that. No fire, either. You two are in luck. I can't stand raw rabbit. And then, after I won the state log throwing championship, I used the prize money to buy a big old riverboat. Who took care of the camel farm? Tar Nation, you ain't been listening to my story. I told you, I gave up the farm when the Secret Service hired me to guard the president. <laughs> I gotta make my legs purdy. Get your hands up. Uh, Hand over your weapons. Huh? No, Jane. He's a lawman. Put these on. Sheriff Calamity Jane didn't rob the Trap City Bank. Save your breath. He don't believe us. Hard-headed son of a gun. You ought to know, huh, Jane? Oh. Oh. Serves him right. If he arrested you, I wouldn't get any of that reward money. Luke, is he a lawman too? No, Jane. As a matter of fact, he isn't. No good varmints had an accomplice. Next time, I'll shoot first and put on the handcuffs later. Say, Luke, you were supposed to help me avoid running into Sheriff Scarecrow. I changed my mind. I wanted to teach you not to attack a lawman. Oh, great. Well, I learned my lesson. But now he's on our trail. How are we going to keep from getting caught? Easy. We'll take the stage, Coach. What? Are you kidding? No, I mean it. Nobody will ever suspect we'd travel that way. Yeah, but my mug is on wanted posters in every town. We're sure to get spotted. The posters show Calamity Jane, a redhead dressed like a man. They don't show Mrs. Jones, a blonde lady who's traveling with her husband. Me in a blonde wig and a dress? Sure, why not? Just for a little while. <laughs> Sorry, Luke, but I ain't putting on no frills and lace. It wouldn't be decent. Hey, thanks, Mr. Jones. Y'all come back now, you hear? Ah, there's nothing like a woman to change a fellow. Huh? Uh, Jane, where are you? Over here, oh. buddy! Oh, oh my, oh, sorry. No need to look away, Luke. I'm washing the duds. No one will recognize me if I'm clean. Uh... Well, I'll be a buck tooth buffalo. That thing is pug ugly. She has such a delicate and feminine way of expressing herself. Huh? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Mrs. Jones, you look ravishing. Cut out the sweet talk, four eyes. <laughs> If your horse don't pipe down, he's going to the glue factory. I don't want to hear so much as a snicker. Oh, what a killjoy. I'm not sure you should wear those. Why not? A girl has the right to accessorize. Now, Jolly, I want you to stay close at all times. I'll whistle for you if I need you. Have a nice trip, Mr. Jones. Jane, you're gonna have to act ladylike and discreet. Ah! By thunder, the devil take 
these boots Ooh. and this skirt. I can't walk in these. Uh, mm -hmm. What? Was it something I said? We haven't met. I'm Reverend Archibald Bonanza. I'm Minnie Twinkle, and this is my daughter Nilly. We're on our way home to Muskrat Junction, where my husband's a lawyer. Pleased to meet you. We're Mr. and Mrs. Jones. But you can call me Scarlet. And you can call him Rhett. We got married this morning. Newlyweds, how romantic. You are united for better or for worse. Knowing my hubby, it'll mostly be worse. <laughs> <laughs> Big scarecrow! Oh no, my earrings have fallen off! Well, I'll be hogtied and horn swaggled. Turns out they was hanging on my ears the whole time. <laughs> I can tell you like the way I talk. That's how everyone talks back home in Boston. Ain't that a fact, Red Honey? On your feet. You gonna do what I say or not? Roll over. Oh, I hate when that happens. My husband, Lester, is a fine lawyer. The Muskrat Junction Globe printed a long article about him last month. And what do you do, Mr. Jones? You joking? Uh, you never heard of the famous Dr. Jones? The fastest prescription writer in the Wild West? You're a medical man! man. Uh, I'm not exactly a... Nah, he's just being modest. But when he whips that thermometer out of his black bag, pow! He takes your temperature in two seconds. He's the best. So, how about a friendly game of poker? <laughs> Why did you stop, you dim-witted driver? Uh-oh, it's the runty little pipsqueak. <laughs> That's a common turn of phrase in uh, Boston. I got a flat horse, so I hailed this here stagecoach, and can you believe it? The driver made me pay full fare. Do I know you? Oh, that's Dr. Jones. My husband's a lawyer. Who are you? My name is Nevada Nerdy. I'm a bounty hunter, and I get the feeling I've seen you before. She has uh, sinus trouble. Oh, look at the pretty round clouds rising up behind that huh? mountain. What's the signal from Squatting Bull? Wells Fargo stagecoach heading for Muskrat Junction with six passengers and a driver aboard. Should be easy pickings. My blanket's on fire. Have a nice day. <laughs> I always knew Bible study would pay off someday. Uh, well, who's doing all that yelling? Comanches. Honey Bunch, do you have those guns Uncle Roscoe gave us as a wedding gift? Uh, Sweetie Pie, you're holding that gun upside down. I believe your hand goes around the brown thingy. And where's the button to make it go bang? We're finished. Why didn't I listen to Mom and become a haberdasher? Did you hear what the man said, Nellie? Always do what your mother tells you. Scarlet, don't get carried away, dear. Must have long talk with Squatting Bull about when he should refer to Stagecoach as easy pickings. Good <laughs> <laughs> oh, heavens, huh? the Reverend is hurt. Huh? It's my back. I threw it out while I was cowering in the stagecoach. Do something, Dr. Jones! Mm, uh, I'll have to give this matter some thought before Step I... aside. I'll handle it. Watch out for me! <laughs> the procedure was somewhat unusual, but it worked. My back feels as good as new. Now, Mrs. Jones has a gift for unusual procedures. 
She also has a face I've seen before, but where? Evening, Jed. How was your drive today? No, I can use a good night's sleep. Ah. But I don't have room at the inn for all these passengers. There's already a sheriff staying here. Did you say a sheriff? Yep, he says he's after Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane? Isn't she that hideous creature, half man, half... <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'd have room for everyone if two people slept in the stable. We will. Come along, my dear. Sleeping in the hay. Oh, that's so romantic. Taking the stagecoach turned out to be a really... Bad idea, I know. As soon as everyone's asleep, we'll sneak out of here. Tonight's dinner is refried beans. Shall I bring two plates to your her love nest? Two orders of refried beans for the stable. You're cheating so that I can win, Luke. Don't do that no more. I can't help it. I'm a poor, lonesome cowboy and a gentleman. Phil Fastfinger ain't no gentleman. He's a low-down sneak, and I'm gonna get him. You say she's blonde in a frilly dress? Nope, that can't be her. Excuse me, stranger. Might I have the honor of knowing your name? Fastfinger. Phil Fastfinger. Those two look mighty familiar. Especially the wife. Where have I seen her face? Of course! Unwanted posters! So, you're going to Muskrat Junction, too? Our family is prominent there. My husband Oops. is out. No! Well, I'll be hogtied and hornswaggled. What, what did, did you, you say? say? She learned the expression from Mrs. Jones, who says that's how people talk in Boston. Well, what a coincidence. I'm from Boston myself. Hmm. Some folks just can't abide strong language. Honeymoon's over, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. That sheriff will never catch Jake, so I'll have to get rid of her myself. Sure took your time about showing up. Did he really think I'd stay awake all night waiting for him to whistle? I should have known this wasn't gonna be easy. Calamity Jane, it's Sheriff Scarecrow. I order you to surrender. She's not surrendering to you. I was here first. I get that reward. Gotta go. Crowds make me nervous. Sorry, pal, but I'm gonna bring her in. Yo, oh, no, you're not. I am, and I ain't your pal. I wished I'd fill them full of lead after I walloped them. Is that ah! so? I'll go ask if anyone's seen it. seen hide nor hair of that dirty, rotten cheater. Tell me, what does Phil Fastfinger look like? He looks like a cross between a vulture and a rattlesnake, with some bloodsucker thrown in, too. Well, this may be a coincidence, but I just saw a fellow who answers to that very description. Where is he? He went up those stairs. Careful, there may be danger through that door. Oh, there's definitely danger through this door. Phil Fastfinger's in a whole heap of danger. This is for robbing the bank where I keep my money. This is for making it look like I was the robber. This is for getting... 
getting my face on wanted posters all over the state. <laughs> and this is for giving me the chance to see my old buddy Luke again. Holy Calamity Jane, I've got you covered. And that goes for you too, Lucky Luke. It was Phil Fastfinger who robbed the Trap City Bank, Sheriff. You'll find the loot in his bag. Nobody move when a girl gets it. Cactus kissing coyote didn't scare me. Uh, here's my husband's card. I have a feeling you're going to be needing him. Oh, somebody help me. I've thrown my back out again. I was wrong about you, Calamity Jane. And I was wrong about you. You're a cute fella, Sheriff Scarecrow. Well, it's getting awful late. I'd best be heading on back to Trap City. I don't much care for emotional farewells. Me neither. Sheriff Scarecrow, wait! I'll run back with you! Whoa! Oh, let me out of here! I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Italian astronomer has discovered canals on Mars. Yeah, sure, Luke. <laughs> and the Martians will sail here in a barge. Go ahead, laugh, but I warn you, we're vulnerable to alien invaders. <laughs> You hear that, Fleetwood? He says there's life on Mars. Yeah, I heard him say that. Max, he'll be claiming we can put Americans on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Luke. You reporters always make up the darndest thing. No, we reporters don't make things up. We tell the truth and nothing but the truth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lou, tell me more about them Martians. What incarnation is that? Mabel! The Martians have taken my Mabel! Abducted cow still missing after three days. The prime suspects are Martians. Read all about it in the Cactus Hole Tribune. It takes skill to read while driving. It says here that Farmer Foldy saw bright disks flying over his cow pasture. They look like flying saucers. Flying saucers, huh? Well, that's just plain silly. If you ask me, Farmer Foldy's been hitting the bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, if it wasn't Martians who took my Mabel, then who was it? Usually it's cattle rustlers who steal cows. You is calling me a liar? I heard Luke say that Martians capture people and animals to do experiments on them. <laughs> Why wouldn't they do experiments on your old cow? She hardly gives you any milk. Don't you talk that way about Mabel! You may be stupid, Foldy, but you ain't no liar. I saw the Martians that took away your Mabel. They were monsters, and they had tentacles. Kind of strange, ain't it? Martians coming all the way to Earth for a cow? Nobody calls me stupid, Fleetwood! <laughs> 
Nobody closer to me, Fordy. Extra, extra, Frank Fleetwood saw the Martians. The Sheriff has promised to catch them. Ain't gonna be easy getting all those tentacles into one pair of handcuffs. Friends, I'm going to be needing volunteers to join the posse and help me defend our fair town of Cactus Hole against the horde of evil Martians. Time to change my recruiting method. Read all about it. We may be facing a war of the worlds. Something tells me this Martian invasion will be good for business. <laughs> Howdy. Hello. Name's Luke. You know my name? Uh, no. Luke. Yeah, that's what I said. If the Martians have arrived, they're not going to find much intelligent life in this town. A scientist is coming here tomorrow to check out the recent sightings. I've been assigned to protect that scientist. A wise decision. We don't know if these visiting aliens come in peace. They may have dreadful weapons. The governor's more worried about hot-headed townspeople than about dreadful aliens. I have an idea, Jolly. Tonight we'll go to Farmer Fooldy's pasture and look for these Martians with tentacles. Could be interesting. As long as they only take cows. Yuck, what is that awful smell? Don't look at me. I'm not the one who eats beans three times a day. It's clouding over. What the heck is that smell? No! What are you doing here? I wanted to get pictures of the Martian. <laughs> Put your tentacles up, you cow-stealing space varmint, or I'm going to shoot! Did you hear that, fellas? The Martians have guns! If they got a gun for each tentacle, then we're in deep trouble. I'm getting scared. Quit your blubbering, men. Forward into battle. Stand away from my cows. <laughs> we're under attack. Open fire! I saw the Martians cross my land. They're green with long, slimy tentacles. There's no time to lose. We have to evacuate the town. Mine cows! Mine poor innocent cows! Why, oh, why did they take in my cows? If we answer that question, we'll solve this Martian mystery. As long as you're here, Lucky Luke, those nasty green critters had better watch their steps. Sheriff, look! There's one now! Greetings, pale faces. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Wily Weasel, medicine man of the snake oil tribe. I can protect you against invaders from the sky. My father's father's father had a close encounter with strange beings from beyond the clouds. My mother's mother's mother wove this tapestry, depicting the encounter. They're small and green. Beings from beyond the clouds are always small and green. This I know. Oh, yeah? Well, ours are great big critters with lots of tentacles. Ah, yes. You see the little green men ride on the backs of the creatures with tentacles, just as humans ride horses. When folks read that, their eyes will be wide as saucers. That's right, they'll be wide as flying saucers. I happen to have some magic amulets guaranteed to protect you against beings from the sky, and they're only $5 a piece. Hey, I gotta buy one right away. It's very important. Hey, save a winner for me. A wily weasel, give me an amulet right now. I pay you five a box. Hey, I'll be the way, I'm a Here, 
this hole, ma'am. I hope you enjoy your stay. Yeah. I'm Lucky Luke. Are you the scientist? Yes, I'm Professor Skippy of the Paranormal Institute. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm just a little bit nearsighted, and I broke my glasses on the trip here. We have a mystery for you to solve. Yes, I heard that numerous animals have been abducted by alien life forms. Well, a few cows are missing, but I'm not sure they were abducted by aliens. You don't... <laughs> You don't believe in extraterrestrial intelligence, is that it? There ain't much intelligence on Earth. Why would there be any in outer space? Kindly spare me the witty comments and take me to someone who saw the aliens. <laughs> the folks who live here are scared, but you don't seem to be. I don't live here. And it takes more than a green complexion to scare us. unidentified object was seen over Omaha. Sorry. The ones I saw looked like saucers and went round and round. Something has been pressing the grass down. Yeah, wagon wheels. Your attitude is highly annoying. I need to see this from above. Can you give me a boost? <laughs> Amazing! It is the work of aliens. Of course it is! And after the cows, they'll start capturing humans. Everyone has to leave before it's too late! <laughs> Don't tell me you actually believe Fleetwood's ridiculous stories about little green men. I do, but you clearly think the cows were taken by harmless criminals. Criminals, yes, but harmless? You gotta be kidding. I'm quite serious. <laughs> But I'm never going to convince you. You're all brawn and no brain, aren't you? But why would anyone bother to steal a few cows and make it look like aliens did it? You are hard-headed. <laughs> Do you notice that distinctive smell? Yep. It's petroleum. Do you know what that means? The aliens have developed machines that run on petroleum. Petroleum? Of course, that's it. Yes, the Martians have advanced technology. small and green, as the medicine man has told you, but they could also look just like us. Huh? Did you say they could look like us, Professor? Yes, indeed. The aliens may already be in our midst, and we don't even know it. I need to get more facts. Let's go see the medicine man. Wily Weasel? He doesn't have facts, just wild stories and overpriced trinkets. I sure miss my glasses. Well, so much for getting the facts. Magnificent! You're taken in by that thing? It's a sacred tapestry. You see this doormat? It's a sacred tapestry! Whatever. The point is, it proves conclusively that there is extraterrestrial life. The ancients never made things up. <sighs> by the way, if you need to learn the Martian language, I can help. Extra, extra, your friends and neighbors may be Martians! My complexion is not green. Look, it's gray. You better not be calling me a Martian, or you're gonna see stars. I was just saying, you weren't from here. You could be from anywhere. Come to think of it, Al, you weren't born here neither. Ah, uh, the truth is, none of us was born in this town. We all are from someplace else. It's true. You could all be Martians. What about you, cowboy? They say you draw faster than your shadow. Sounds pretty unearthly to me. And I want to know how come Al wins the boiled egg eating contest every year. It ain't human to eat so many boiled eggs. Calm down, I'm sure the aliens come in peace. You can have this handy Martian English dictionary for only $10. Wily Weasel is quite right. What reason do we have for thinking they're hostile? Mine cows? 
You sure do seem to be fond of strangers, strange lady. Where are you from, anyhow? It's true. She is strange, always bumping into things. How rude! Hey, that was a flying saucer. <laughs> Tell me, do you believe in Martians yet? Uh, what the heck's going on? It's the little green men. You're scared? No, but my customers are, and where they go, I follow. Everyone's leaving. So long, guys. I'm gonna visit my cousin Pete in Peoria. You just stand there, I'll run for it. But hey, wait, don't leave me here all by myself. Oh, dang it. Diggity, jump, jump. So you're leaving too, Wily Weasel? Purely for business reasons. My Martian marketing campaign turned out to be so effective it scared off the customers. There's no more money to be made in this town. Huh? The town where the Martians are? It certainly is. And if you're looking for amulets, souvenirs, and maps of the town, they're for sale right here. No, I still don't believe in Martians, but everybody else sure does. Step right up and see the amazing Martians. There's plenty of them for everyone. Whoa, this place is a regular tourist attraction. Amulets, get your amulets here, $5 each. You can also have yourself fumigated for only $15. Huh? Wiley Weasel has promised an alien sighting tonight. I'm burning to see it. What was the weather like on the night of your first sighting? Oh, it was cloudy, I recall, and uh, there was a slight breeze. Cloudy with a slight breeze. Customers are starting to complain. They ain't seen hide no hair and no Martians. Ah, uh, don't worry. They'll be here. You can trust the word of Wily Weasel. Too bad. I'd prepared a welcoming speech. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Martians bring in a lot more money than cows. <laughs> This can't be happening! It can't be happening! Uh, uh, uh. Seems somebody wanted to scare Farmer Fooldy into selling off his farm. Yo, uh, do you know who that somebody is? Maybe. My cowboy is looking more confused than usual. There's a link between the weather and the Martian settings, but I don't know what it is. You'll figure it out with my help. So Wily Weasel is behind all this. Wait, that branch isn't strong enough to hold us both. I think it's time you and I had a little talk. After you talk, could you get me down? <laughs> extra, extra, the Martians were fake. Read all about it in the Cactus Hole Tribune. Extra, extra, Wily Weasel was behind the bogus alien invasion. Not too disappointed? No, because Martians do exist. The truth is out there, and I'll find it. I sure do miss my glasses. I drew the crop circles, but I didn't do the other stuff. I knew all along that that Martian story was a hoax. Yeah, yeah so, so did, did we. we. Some folks were scared, but I knew better. <laughs> Come along, Daisy. Come on, Boyta. We're going home. Daisy, don't dawdle.
Wiley Weasel may be a con man, but he's not the one behind this Martian scam. Stop worrying about little green men and start brushing our big white horse. Come quick! They're lynching the Martian! Uh, I mean the medicine man. Your ambulance won't help you this time. If I get out of this jam, I'll give up cheating people and change my name to Truthful Turtle. <laughs> There won't be no hanging tonight. The Martians have come back! And this time they've taken... Another cow? No! Professor Skippy! What? They're taking humans? The Martians! Run for your lives! How'd it happen? She went out to my cow pasture to look for Martians tonight, and the glowing discs reappeared. I heard her scream, and then there was silence, and she was gone. Fleetwood! Huh? Oh, no Martians here. Just one professor. Fleetwood's behind this. He attached lanterns to a windmill. When the windmill turns, light from the lanterns reflects off the clouds. I know. Oh, do you? <laughs> yes. And I know why you did it. Petroleum. Right. Fool, he don't realize that up from his cow pasture is a bubbling crude oil. So tonight you decided to make him disappear. Yeah. I was gonna blame the Martians, but then my plan was ruined by this airhead. I resent that. I know that kind of rifle, Fleetwood. They have one drawback. <laughs> Their owners are often fools. Still think I'm an airhead? I'm leaving. I have to investigate strange sightings in a town called Roswell. You gonna spend your life chasing little green men? If I switch to tall dark ones, I'll look you up. As well as east, and we're heading west. Uh, too bad, cowboy. I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Bang, 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 kaboom, bang! One thousand Apache Braves thundered across the plain, hot on my heels, till I spun in my saddle, aimed, fired, and scattered them to the four winds. All of a sudden, the ground trembled, and there they were, Buffalo, millions of them, thundering across the plain hot on my heels, as if that could rattle Buffalo Bill, the greatest buffalo hunter in the West, if not the world. You lie through your teeth. I've wiped out as many as you, 180,604. I got the arrest warrant to prove it. Well, if it isn't J.J. Mistil, what are you doing here? You ain't the greatest buffalo hunter in the West, never mind in the whole world. There cannot be two greatest buffalo hunters in the West, if not the world. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dang show pistols. I forgot. They're loaded with blanks. Let the record note, you're the one who started this, Cody. No vacancy. Buffalo Bill! I'll double it! 
<laughs> Senator Bartholomew Haycock? Oh, lucky Luke. I appreciate your agreeing to meet me. I do love the zoo. It reminds me of the Senate. Surely you must be aware, Lucky. Uh, may I call you Lucky? Yeah, go ahead, Bart. Surely you're aware, my dear Lucky, that our buffalo population has been almost entirely wiped out, a most distressing and deplorable situation. <laughs> our government is greatly disturbed. <laughs> We've decided that since we hold one last pair of these noble quadrupeds in captivity, we would like to repopulate America's plains with oh, these yeah. lulking, mm -hmm. hairy mm -hmm. beasts. What you need me for? Someone has to drive these two behemoths to Wyoming. Say hello to Isaiah Pegboard. He'll be your right-hand man. Boy, this sure is an honor, Mr. Luke. Pegboard here will be in charge of preparing the buffalo's food during the journey. Don't see why. There's grass everywhere. These buffalo were born in captivity, sir. They couldn't graze to save their lives. <laughs> Percy, Hebzibah! Percy, Hebzibah! Uh, come here! <laughs> uh, why don't you toss them a stick or two? They love to fetch. I'll just bet. I'm the greatest buffalo hunter in the West, if not the world. No, you ain't. I am. Read all about it right here, folks. Extra. Buffalo spotted roaming the American plains. Buffalo? Oh, great day in the morning. What do you say we split him in half, partner? Who knows if I can trust you? You're talking to Buffalo Bill, cowboy. This is the last sidearm I buy marked made in Taiwan. Don't you fret, Mr. Luke. I know the Wild West like the back of my hand. I read every word Zane Gray ever wrote. I hope you're ready for action, because we're pulling into Laramie. I love this town. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Let's try to keep a low profile. <laughs> make him stampede? The only sound that really upsets him is pow, pow, <laughs> gunshot. <laughs> A warm welcome to you, oh, last of the mighty buffalo. May you be frisky and frolics, and may you be fruitful and multiply, and may the thundering herds of your offspring fill the great plains of Wyoming to overflowing. The citizens of Laramie open their arms and their hearts to you. Oh, stalwart Percy and oh, gentle Hepzibah, take your ease amongst us, for we're a friendly folk and true. Oh, good. Can't shoot without these. of a Rossini opera usually work. Hmm. Know any Rossini? In addition to my familiarity with show tunes, I am, of course, well acquainted with the classics. Yeah! I'll take the guy and you take the girl. <laughs> Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Figaro. What's wrong with you, anyway? You could have let them smash up the school. Yeah. Reckon we should get him some water? The buffalo belong to me. No, no, they don't. They belong to me.
We'll see who turns out to be the stronger one. <coughs> a mangy varmint. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> there they are. Time to play one of my original compositions. <laughs> we'll just see who's the greatest <laughs> buffalo hunter of them all, you two-bit tin horn twit. Whoa. <laughs> we just carry on? Out here in the Wild West, Isaiah, you're better off not meddling in other people's business. It's coming. Keep your shirts on. One of these days, they're gonna have to learn to graze. I wish they could, but that's the kind of thing buffalo learn from their parents, and uh, Percy and Hebsba <laughs> never knew their mom and dad. Aren't you kind of a foster dad, Isaiah? Okay, you kids, watch closely now. Daddy's gonna show you how big buffaloes eat. How indelicate. I certainly wouldn't want to eat off his plate. Mm -hmm. It sure is delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Talk about yummy. Mm -hmm. It's positively succulent. I hope for your sake, Isaiah, you won't be obliged to demonstrate the breeding process as well. Hmm? So tell me, do you really know Calamity Jane? I mean, like up close and personal? <laughs> yep. And Billy the Kid? Yep. Oh, and I bet you fought absolutely tons of Indians. Yep. Oh, all my life I've dreamed of meeting an Indian. A real one. And this is your lucky day. There's one tailing us right now. Yep. How many moons has it been since the tribe had a chance to eat buffalo steak, medium rare with mint sauce? Way too many. Hmm. Uh, 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 uh. No one's going to be eating the property of the United States government. <laughs> I'll just hide out in this here hole, and when they come moseying by, bang! And J.J. Miss Deal Esquire will go down in history as the greatest of all time. I ain't for jokes. Who else would climb into a hole and leave the rifle in the grass? <laughs> So, is it clear? If your people want to see the return of the great buffalo herds of the old days, you can't eat these two. Mm. Do I have your word? I, two left feet wearing right foot in moccasins, give my word, I will not eat the buffalo. I thought somehow they'd be scarier. You've read too many bad novels. All right, all right, I'm getting your supper on. Quit your pouting, cowboy. You never stood a chance against the great, the high, the mighty Buffalo Bill. You ain't seen my ass and J.J. Miss Deal, Cody, because I swear I'll track you all the way to the gates of hell. You're a goner! A Sioux. Capturing him would be a feather in my cap. Lately, I don't get no respect. <laughs> nice doggy. Oh, aren't you a good boy? Yes, a good, friendly little doggy. Down, boy. Sit, sit. No, I might be red and stumpy, but I ain't no fire hydrant. Two left feet wearing right-footed moccasins has some sensational news to tell you, Chief Wildling Bear. Uh, mm, the white man's <laughs> packing up and going home. No, there are buffalo on the plane. Buffalo? 
Black Buffalo? There are two of them, and I gave the Pale Face my solemn word that I wouldn't eat them. But hey, that's not binding on the rest of you. Tell the warriors to gather for the dance of the buffalo. Gonna have us a barbecue. They were brought up with cuddles. <laughs> Mama's pet poodle. <laughs> the yappy little rodent. Oh. Mm hmm. I'll go rustle up some grub. You be careful now, Isaiah. A lot of folks interested in our buffalo friends. Don't you worry about me, Mr. Luke. Percy, Hebzibah. Oops, <laughs> I forgot. They've been corked. There. That's better. Fetch, kitties! <laughs> Taken so long. Percy! Hepzibah! <laughs> Rust doggies, be good now. Go away, would you? Uh, what are you doing? Taking a mud bath. Don't just stand there like the village idiot. Get me out of here! Adam, uh, what kind of work do you do, sir? I'm a buffalo hunter, my lad. Get a buffalo hunter? I won't let you lay a hand on Percy or Hepzibah. Careful, boy. You're gonna hurt yourself. Your little buffalo friends are getting off easy. I got other fish to fry. Today, I'm setting my sights on Buffalo Bill. You never should have let him have your rifle, Isaiah. I didn't let him, Mr. Luke. He took it. Huh? Hmm. Begging your pardon, but I'm gonna have to slaughter these buffalo to settle an old score. I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> I reckon you don't know whose presence you're in, young feller. Buffalo Bill. The Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill? <laughs> the real Buffalo Bill? Did you hear that, Mr. Luke? Luke? Are you Lucky Luke? The Lucky Luke? Yep. Uh, take it all back. Oh, I've seen every one of your shows, Mr. Bill. Could I have your autograph? <laughs> Tony! It's my turn to dig you a hole. It's going to be six feet deep with plenty of room to stretch out in. <laughs> <laughs> I say it. Don't tell me you uncorked their ears. Oh, there's always more seating. Buffalo Graveyard. I could have sworn it was further north. <laughs> Percy? Hepzibah? <laughs> it's Daddy. Hey, hey, you, you got it all wrong. It wasn't me who did it. Come on, kids, relax. It's Daddy. Don't you know me? <laughs> the buffalo are, 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 are a little out of sorts. You are the expert, Isaiah. It's your problem. Mr. Luke, I'm an expert in well-bred buffaloes, not snorting rampaging bulligans. Took this big fella down back in Arc 9. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, Buffalo! Squirrel, you go take care of the two pale faces. I want to handle those two wild-eyed beasts myself. A wiser plan might be to run for your <laughs> life. Ah. <laughs> Look! Oh, we'll be safe behind there! Uh-oh. The uh, guys could just scrunch over a bit. Hey, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Come on, fellas, have a heart, will you? Nobody gets in without a reservation. If you'll just get me out of this one, I swear I'll never lay a hand on any living creature again! Mr. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh. Hey, they're crazy. Old cuddles wouldn't even recognize them now, Isaiah. What are you gonna do with them? Guess I'll turn them into the local authorities. I'll put y'all in the show. The crowd will eat it up. Chief, make much wampum. My boys don't put on a lick of war paint for less than 25% of the gate. Huh? You'll drive me to the poorhouse, man. Who do you think you are? I wouldn't give Geronimo 25%. Well, Isaiah, here we are. We've got some buffalo mash all ready for you. They must be awful hungry. Come, come, my good sir. Who ever heard of a buffalo eating from a bucket? Uh, Buffaloes are mm -hmm. grazing animals. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Luke, uh, where shall I send the birth announcements? Huh? Uh, Mr. Luke? And thus turns another page in the grand history of the West. And if legend and lore have upheld and preserved the memory of Buffalo Bill, they have been less kind to John John, Miss Steele. So that's two tofu burgers and a spinach wrap. Anything else? Oh, down, boy! I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. Again, tough luck, Sir Alexander. I hate crazy eights. How much do I owe you, Napoleon? Oh, not much. Only seven million two hundred thousand. That's dollars, not rubles. <laughs> I should have listened to my mother. She always used to say, "Never trust a French emperor." Igor, pay Napoleon the third what I owe him. Uh, I'm afraid the imperial coffers are empty, Your Majesty. You've been playing lots of crazy eights lately. I'm waiting. <laughs> Seven million. <laughs> you know, get me that money fast. I want you to sell something we don't need. Hey, for example, Alaska. You want to sell Alaska? Think it over, Your Majesty. Who in this world will buy it? I presume. 
Yep, that's me, in the flesh. What can I do for you? You can help our nation bring liberty and free enterprise to Alaska, which our government has agreed to purchase from the Tsar of Russia. I am William Seward, Secretary of State, and this is my friend Ralph Bargan. He's a businessman who's going to assist with the transaction, as I hope you will, Mr. Luke. Would you pass the shampoo? Mr. Bargain and I will soon be setting out for the Alaskan town of Sitka, where we will conclude the deal that transfers Alaska to American control, and I want you to come with us. Go easy on the lather, will you? Huh? You see, we'll be carrying $7,200,000 to pay the Russians, and we need a guard who's discreet but effective. If I were you, Luke, I'd turn down the job. You won't like Alaska. I know the place. It's full of bears and wolves and snow and ice. And, <sighs> and robbers, too. None that I know about. And folks there are honest like me. Funny, I had a feeling you'd say that. Seward, huh? if you need a guard, then I'm your man. Oh, uh, why, uh, thank you. Thank you for these supplies, my good man. Soon you'll be an American because we're here to buy Alaska. You'd better keep your voice down. Not everyone here looks friendly. Oh, I'm sure these folks are very nice. After all, they're future Americans. Now, where is Ralph? He said he had to go to a business meeting. Have you known him long? Yes, and he knows Alaska like the back of his hand. I have the greatest faith in him. And in everyone else. Ah, what rotten luck. Now I'll have to deal with Seward and Lucka Luke. I had it all worked out. As soon as we arrived in Alaska, I was gonna take care of Seward. With him out of the way, I'd grab the loot. Then I'd buy Alaska and I'd own its vast wealth in furs and gold mines. Greetings, Comrade Bargain. Yuri Karamolov, the Tiger of Siberia, and Sergei Smirnov, Hyena of Moscow, my friends. Who it were you talking to just now? <laughs> oh, I was just muttering to myself about how I want to help you with your revolution. <laughs> well, revolution needs all the help it can get. Yes, the downtrodden Russian peasants have suffered for too long. It is time to rise up and topple the capitalist system with guns and bombs. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, down with downtrodden uh, and up with uprising and revolution and guns and bombs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but guns and bombs cost money, and if you want to earn some in a hurry, I've got a little job for you, tiger and hyena. It sure is cold in Alaska, Jolly, but I find it nice and invigorating. Why couldn't they buy Mexico? I really don't like chilly weather, and there's nothing to graze on but frozen pebbles. Smell that air! It's so fresh, so bracing! <sighs> and soon it'll be fresh American air! By the way, where's Ralph? He's supposed to be guiding us to Sitka. He had a meeting. He seems to have a lot of those. Captain Stimulov, I'm counting on you to follow my instructions. Don't worry, Inc., Mr. Bargain. I'm doing anything for money, except, of course, drink water or wash myself. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Ralph, I hope all those meetings didn't tire you out. On the contrary, they're quite stimulating. <laughs> With all this ice and cold and sleet, Alaska is a miserable place. It's high time I found myself a new cowboy. Oh no, as if things weren't bad enough. We have to find shelter. I know some friendly peasants who live in a cabin just up ahead. There it is. I welcome you to my humble home! Come in, come in! <laughs>
Nice weather we're having, isn't it? <laughs> That's a joke. It's funny, huh? And my wife prepared fine dinner for you. I hope you like strong enough. I made an extra big pot of it for you filthy, I mean, nice Americans. On behalf of the United States government, I thank you. My, what big boots you have. Yeah, <laughs> the better to run around serving you dinner. And what a deep voice you have. Just like Mama. Now eat your food while it's hot. First, let me say how glad I am that my government is buying Alaska and that you good folks will soon be happy capitalist Americans. Da! Uh, happy capitalist Americans! Now hurry up and eat! Come on, Luke. You don't want to offend our host. You must eat that delicious stroganoff. After you. You're the guest. You start. I really couldn't. But you must, I insist. You go first. I wouldn't dream of it. Go ahead. Americans always lead the way. Eat it. Uh, Lou, what's gotten it? Do you remember these are future voters? Come back here, you two. Lucky Lou, don't chase them. You'll get lost. I hate blizzards. You did the right thing. It was too risky. For who? Huh? <gasps> oh, no! Tasty. Very tasty. <laughs> Jolly Jumper. No, there was poison in the stroganoff. Sleeping powder. A big enough dose to knock out a horse. They knew we were coming. Seems suspicious, doesn't it, Ralph? What did I tell you, Luke? Alaska's a dangerous place. Well, Jolly Jumper, you slept for 15 hours. Keep your voice down, will you, cowboy? That stroganoff seems to have left me with a headache. After you, William. Well, thank you, Ralph. Mr. Seward, wait. The bridge may be booby-trapped. Nonsense! I'm sure it's perfectly fine. We're on an important government mission, so I won't have any dawdling. There! See? What did I tell you? Solid as a rock! <laughs> ah! 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 Somebody help me! Hang on, I'm coming. This isn't doing wonders for my headache. Frozen. Lucky Luke, save me! Try to grab something. Grab something, huh? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> no, no, hurry! I, I can't feel my feet, my, 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 my legs, my uh, hands, my arms, my head! Oh, no, a polar bear. Don't you worry, stranger. Cook Cook doesn't like frozen food. Cook Cook, sit! I'll never eat stroking off again. <laughs> Ah, oh, some days everything just seems to go right. I got the loot, Seward's in the drink, and Lucky Luke is lost in deepest Alaska with the tiger and the hyena after him. They think I'm gonna give them their money for their revolution, but I'm not giving them a nickel. In fact, I intend to turn them in for knocking off Lucky Luke and Seward. <laughs> I wish someone were here to admire my brilliance. Are you talking to yourself again, Comrade Ralski? Yuri, Sergei, Tiger of Siberia, greetings. You have the money you owe us? I don't owe you anything yet, comrades. The Stroganov operation was a dismal failure, and capitalist Lackey Luke escaped the bridge. Don't forget, you'll only get your money when he's liquidated. Don't worry, we will get Lucky Luski. That's the spirit. You'll find him downriver from here. I'm going to Sitka by boat. Remember? 
I'm a friend of the revolution, and Lucky Lusky is my enemy. That makes him an enemy of the revolution! There's no need to be afraid. Cook Cook is giving you a rub down. Meet Zunuk and Inuk Hunter. If it weren't for him and his bear, you'd be an icicle by now. <laughs> oh, thank you, my friend. Yeah, you. I intend to make you the first American citizen in the territory of Alaska. Yeah, you. Yeah, but we haven't paid for Alaska yet. The gold, Lucky Luke, do you have the gold? Sorry, but I don't. Bargain made off with it. What, Ralph? Yeah! <laughs> How could he do that to me? He's a loyal friend. Yeah! <laughs> Every traitor was once a friend. <laughs> I failed in my mission. Yeah! <laughs> I'll never show my face in public again. I'm staying here. <laughs> Good! You're on time for the rendezvous! Of course. You're paying me. I want you to take me upriver to Sitka. That is costing you extra. I will do anything for money except, of course, my laundry. <laughs> Mr. Seward, you mustn't give up now. What's the point? It's all over. <laughs> yes, it's all over. The fake peasants. The fake voters! No! The Tiger of Siberia and Hyena Moscow, Russian revolutionaries. Do you have any last words, Lucky Lusky? Guk Guk, stand up. Good boy, Guk Guk. Put them down. Obviously, you two work for bargain. Where is he? Come on, out with it. Filthy capitalist swine. We're not going to answer any of your questions. Long live the revolution! Feel like a snack, Guk Guk? I've got tiger and hyena on the menu. Bargain's traveling up river to Sitka. That's all we know. I don't understand why would Ralph go to Sitka. Since he has the gold, he must be going there to buy Alaska for himself. Why that sneak? We've got to hurry and stop him. Can't you go any faster? Duh, but you're having to pay extra. Of all the nerve, you ought to be embarrassed. Oh, I am seeing how I'm blushing. <laughs> okay. It's Lukalewski. Gold thief, dead ahead. Gallop, Charlie. I'd like to see him gallop with someone sitting on him. That pesky cowboy doesn't know when to give up. While I'm shooting at him, you accelerate. Duh, but the little extra is no great big extra. <laughs> Time to say goodbye, Lucky Lewski. Costing you extra on top of extra. This just ain't my lucky day. Wind, ice, and snow. There isn't much variety in Alaska. <laughs> lucky Luke. They'll never catch, Ralph. Leave me here. I'll build myself an igloo and live out my days in shame. <laughs> Don't lose heart. We can still make it to Sitka before bargain. Be quiet. The mountain spirit gets angry when he hears loud noises. Uh-oh. 
Sorry about that. Come back, Ski, anytime. Yeah, all I have to do is go see the governor, sign the papers, and in one hour, I'll be the proud owner of Alaska. <laughs> Guys are getting on my nerves. Elisha, that's no pierogi, that's my wife. <laughs> I've just come up with a very clever plan. <laughs> Greetings, courageous soldiers of the Tsar. God, these people have style. It's the tiger of Siberia and the hyena of Moscow, along with an Inuk terrorist and a subversive bear. Put up your hands, you're under arrest. Bargain is behind this. Gentlemen, I am William Henry Seward, a representative of the United States government. Here is my letter of introduction. <laughs> well, I can explain. I had a slight mishap while crossing a bridge. Can't you take my word for it? I'm telling you the truth. I've traveled all the way up here to buy Alaska. Yeah! Come back! I am William Henry Seward! So you are not William Henry Seward? No, Mr. Governor, sir. Seward turned out to be a crook who ran off with all the money that was entrusted to him. But what am I supposing to do? The Tsar won't be very happy to learn I'm not selling Alaska. This is your lucky day, your governorship, because I'm ready to buy, and I'll pay in gold. Gold, you know. Uh, yeah, whatever, your excellent hood. Let's sign. Oh, net, net, we cannot sign in just like that. We must be following protocol. Proto what? Protocol, this is good manners. I don't get many guests in this desolate place. I want to enjoy your company. <laughs> Let us begin with a guided tour of the building. Lucky Luke, don't just stand there. Think of a way to get us out of here. I think better when it's quiet. Lucky Luke, Ski. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow you go in front of firing squad and we continue revolution. Oh, you'll find it hard without money. What do you mean by that, imperialist running dog? If the Tsar's soldiers fill us full of lead, Bargain won't have to pay you. Your best bet is to get us out, then you can do us in. Is this some kind of sneaky capitalist trick? Oh, no. I prefer your revolutionary bullets to those of the Tsar. This is my prized collection of balalaikas. You know, I am from very musical family. In fact, my daughter Tatiana will sing a recital in your honor. Gee, that's charming, your Governor Hood, uh, but I think first we should... Did you hear a noise? All right, Lucky Looks Kid, come out of there! Oh, gook gook, it's snack time! Are you sure you don't want to hear my daughter Tatiana's recitaling? Yeah, yeah, sounds great, great, great. But after you sell me Alaska, now hand over that pen! Your Excellency, this man is a criminal, and that gold belongs to the United States. I am William Henry Seward, sent here by the U.S. government to buy Alaska. Mr. Seward, before you come in here, this man said you're a no-good Nick. Who is right? Can you prove to me that you represent the United States? Yes, I have a letter of... Uh, uh, uh. Huh? Hey, what do you think you're doing, are you mad? I have further proof here, and here, and also... Who is to stopping now? I believe you. Yeah! I'll have a museum built for your balalaika collection and an opera house for your daughter. The U.S. government thanks you. Don't mention it. We Russians still have plenty of ice and snow in the old country. Ralph Parkin, you'll be the inaugural inmate in Alaska's first prison. Sanook, to thank you for your help, I hereby declare you to be Alaska's first American citizen. Thank you. I just hope I don't turn out to be Alaska's last Inuk. 
Cook, cook, my furry friend. Thanks for getting rid of the tiger and the hyena. I wonder where they are. Someplace nice and warm. As for you, Lucky Luke. Hmm? Luke? Luke! I'm a bold, lonesome cowboy. 